Hey everybody, this is Jean-Michel Masson from Masson Music. So we're going to be leaving you a couple of these short videos, just giving you a few tips, things that we think that uh, musicians starting out or intermediate to advanced students might want to know, things that might be helpful to you. So these are not your, your uh, professional online tutorials or lessons, which in the future we will be releasing. This is just some short snippets which might be helpful to you. So I'm going to start out today with something really basic. This is mainly for your beginner guitarists. However, uh, because I'm going to be explaining some technical things, technique is kind of like ongoing, it's universal, it's continuous. So even if you've been playing for a long time and you see yourself as more intermediate or advanced, this can still maybe apply to you. Maybe the things you've been struggling with is because one of these things is not sorted out or not seen to. So, uh, wherever you are, stay tuned, okay, uh, in your guitar progress. So I want to speak about a few things with the right hand, a few things with the left hand. And we at Masson Music like to simplify things and sometimes just number it so that you can remember one, two, three, four things to help you with this, three, four things to help you with that. So, obviously, you're playing guitar, we have the right hand, we have the left hand. So, so let's simplify it. And if, if you're starting out on the guitar, you probably need to know with the left hand, how to press effectively and what is the correct technique to help you with pressing. And then with the right hand, you, you mostly in the beginning, if, especially if you're attending a school like Masson Music or learning in a very contemporary, practical way, you're probably going to be strumming mostly in the beginning. Okay, So we're going to cover uh, effective strumming technique with the right hand. So left hand, how to press well, right hand, how to strum well. But just a basic foundation but as I said these are things that you should be applying no matter how long you've been playing so let's start with the left hand I'm going to go four things with the left hand four things with the right hand so when it comes to pressing effectively there's four things which I'd like you to remember and maybe you can just write them down maybe we'll even post them in the uh, the comment section of this video um, the first one is your thumb, the position of your thumb, right? So the thumb being the anchor of your whole hand and the, giving the ability for your hand to move and to press and being the strongest part of your hand. It's very important where we position it. So check that out first. Where is your thumb at the back when you're pressing chords, okay? It should be more or less in the middle of the back, right? So this would be at the top. That would be at the bottom. Neither of those are good. Now obviously this is relative and you're going to move it around as you press different chords but a good starting point is keep your thumb in the middle okay that leads to the second thing which is having a good space under your fingers under your fingers um, so that your the bottom of your your fingers or your palm does not touch any of the strings so if our thumb is positioned position more or less in the middle of the back of the neck that will give us a fair amount of space over here and a good way to test it is to take like a pencil or a pen and, and see if you can feed it through there. All right, so if our thumb is at the top, did you see that straight away I closed, it closed the space? As my thumb swivels to the top, my whole hand moves down and I close up that space. Now I'm going to block other strings. So the first two things are kind of linked to each other. Thumb in the right place will mean a good space at the bottom, no blocking strings um, that we that we shouldn't be touching um, or being pressed by other, other, other strings, by other fingers or are supposed to be left open. Okay, then the third one is specifically how do we press with the actual digits that are pressing the strings and that is clawed fingers. You need to have clawed fingers and what does that look like? Well, this is flat. I'd, we call this flat fingers and we call this clawed fingers. Okay, again, it's like your thumb is the starting point. Your thumb anchors your whole hand to then create a nice space at the bottom and then to help you press with, a, with nice clawed fingers. So that would look like a 90 degree angle or just short of a 90 degree angle. You know, that's the way that um, the joints of your fingers should bend. Okay, so this is very wrong. This is very right. Okay, again, if, we, if our thumb is moving all over the place, if our thumb is at the bottom, then we're going to be pressing it like at over that 90 degrees. Um, and if our thumb is at the top, then we, generally our fingers are going to flatten. 
So again, start with the thumb, get the thumb right, then get the space right, then get nice 90 degree clawed fingers right. So that's three things. And the last one is where on the tips of your fingers should the strings actually press into? And that's right in the middle of the tip of your finger, okay? And if you're starting out, these are still gonna be really soft. So right in the middle of the soft part, if you've been playing for quite a while, if you practice regularly, this is where the callus is. And you should be pressing right in the middle of the callus. So not too close to the nail, okay? Um, you're not gonna have any power there and not underneath your finger either, right in the middle of the tip. So let's run through those quickly again. Thumb in the middle of the back, okay? Creating a nice anchor point for a good space underneath your fingers, then clawed 90 degree fingers, pressing right in the center of the tip of your fingers. So I'm telling you, if you, um, no matter how long you've been playing, starting out playing very long, if you cover these four things and check if they're correct, it's gonna help you a lot with pressing. Pressing isn't as much about strength as what it is about technique and position. And once you find that perfect feel and the perfect position, Pressing is going to be so much easier. So this is especially going to help you with your open chords. Open chords is any chords in, um, which you're pressing within the first three frets, which don't require barring. Barring is when you press more than one string, string down at the same time. So this is going to help you with all your open chords. But even later when you move to bar chords, it's going to help you with that as well. In other videos, we'll get into some more technique regarding pressing when it comes to bar chords. Okay, that's the left hand. Right hand, okay, how, how do we strum effectively? Well, at a later stage, we'll, get, we'll, we'll give you some videos helping you with, with basic uh, picking technique. But now we're gonna talk about strumming. So we're gonna break, also four things, we're gonna break it into two. Two things about pick grip, and then two things about what your hand, wrist, and arm should be doing. Okay, so let's start with the pick. So when you're holding the pick, I don't know how Clearly you can see this, but I've got a shark fin, a white shark fin pick. It's like a medium thickness. I would suggest, by the way, um, for strumming purposes, that you have something with a medium thickness, medium to light, but not something too, too thick and heavy that's going to really jar into the strings and give you too much resistance. Okay, so you take the pick. I've got the shark fin. It's got a couple of different points. But take one of the points on your pick uh, and make sure that that point is is uh, perpendicular to your strings. So if we see that that's perpendicular, that is not, that's running at an angle, okay? So if you're looking down, your pick should be pointing at a 90 degree angle to your strings, okay? Then, so that's the one thing, the, um, the position of the pick, um, the angle of the pick, okay? And holding it not too short, not too long. So this is still the position of the pick. So it's still point number one, okay? So 90 degrees or perpendicular to the strings, don't hold it too short, um, don't hold it too long either. You just wanna have a good piece of pick to flap around a bit so that you're strumming, uh, there isn't too much resistance when strumming, okay? Then let's get to the second thing which is still pick grip, but more specifically, how are you holding the pick? Okay, so how do you squeeze a tub of toothpaste? Well, I've asked some of my students this and I've got some shocking answers. So I hope you do it in the correct way. But um, you shouldn't be squeezing a toothpaste like this, right? Or how do you, how do you press uh, a remote, a TV remote, or how do you type on your cell phone, right? It's, it's all a pretty gentle motion, generally using thumb and index finger. So it's the same concept. These fingers shouldn't even be featuring at all in gripping your pick. So you take your thumb, make your thumb parallel to the strings, take your index finger, bring your index finger in basically sort of perpendicular to the strings and you just put your pick in there and you make sure, as I spoke about in point number one, that the angle of the pick is right and boom, there's, that's how you grip it. And going back to the toothpaste analogy, right, if you're going to squeeze way too hard, all the toothpaste is going to come out. So we don't want to squeeze too hard. Okay, then everything's going to tense up here and you're not going to have a lot of freedom when, you, when you're strumming. Um, so, but when, when you press toothpaste to get the toothpaste out, you do need to, need to apply a little bit of pressure. So that's why that's a good analogy. Think about that amount of tension just to get the toothpaste out. That's all you need, okay? And usually, 
contrary to what we would think, gripping the pick too hard is what makes the pick actually fall out or move when you're playing, not gripping it too light, okay? Because when you pick for equal, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction, so if you grip the pick too tightly, okay, there's, you're creating a lot of push against the strings and the strings are creating a lot of push back, okay? And then the, that's when the pick moves around. So hold it nice and lightly, just with these two fingers and the pick's not actually going to move around too much. So let me, let's quickly just recap on those two things. The, firstly, angle of the pick being perpendicular or 90, 90 degrees to the strings with a fair amount sticking out but not too much, not too little. Then the second point is grip the pick with the index finger and thumb and the way you do it is the way you would press a, a, a tube of toothpaste. Okay, then two more things. What do we do with our hand, wrist, and arm? Well, our arm should be doing as little as possible, okay? All right, so your arm is pretty much just hanging there. So anchor the your, your just above your elbow on the top of the guitar and let your arm hang down so that your hand is just over the sound hole. That's all the arm should be doing, right? Okay? Then all the movement is... The rotation of the wrist literally your wrist rotating so if your wrist is tight and again this flows even from how hold how tight you're holding the pick if you're holding too tight your wrist will be tight and this isn't going to be possible also if we are strumming with the arm okay that's not going to be conducive to our wrist being loose either so our arm should just hang there and then we rotate rotate the wrist open closed open closed it's 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 kind of, often we think of strumming as a down-up, but it's a, it's a mix of down-up and out-closed or open-closed. So the wrist is opening and closing, and that makes it so much easier. Okay, so that's, that's very important. That's, that's the third point having to do with um, hand, wrist, arm. And then the fourth thing I'd say is, especially when you're starting out, strum nice and big. Now that might seem contrary to what I said about the arm, but no, it's, it's, it's not actually. Big doesn't mean more arm, okay? It means let your wrist move freely, okay? Later on, as you advance more, you're going to, on purpose, try and miss certain strings. And then maybe <clears throat> you're going you're to shorten your strumming circle a bit. And then when you're picking with the pick, you're going to shorten it even more. But in the beginning, when you're trying to get a nice, easy, flowing strumming technique, you want to actually move all the way down, all the way up. So the full rotation of the wrist, nice and big. So let's recap quickly on the, the right hand. First of all, two points on how to grip the pick. The position of the pick being correct. Then how tightly we grip it with the thumb and index finger. Then thirdly, arm just hanging there. Wrist, rotating through the wrist, a nice loo loose wrist. So that all the movement is with the hand and wrist. And then fourthly, nice big strumming circles. So there you have it. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll post these, these eight pointers uh, or pieces of advice, four for the left hand, four for the right hand. And this is going to take you, I really, take, really believe, take you so far. We're teaching guitar students who, who are our most advanced students who've been playing for years. And we go back to these same technical principles and remind them, uh, about these even for myself when when I'm get, like really tense or especially in, now it's winter when it's cold uh, I find myself making these same mis mistakes and and uh, forgetting about these same technical principles so use them remember them they'll help you a lot so we just like to ask you please if you if this video was helpful and um, if you'd like to see a whole bunch more then like subscribe and please share with anybody that uh, who, would, who might be interested or who this video might help. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.